Uh, joining us now is Matt Weaver. Uh, you are a rail worker, I believe, since the 90s, so a long time. Um, you are um, uh, very active, uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, the, the what would have been a strike uh, last year if it wasn't stopped. Uh, and you have uh, been involved with uh, this East Palestine um, disaster. It's, it's almost like uh, two plus two does not equal four uh, in East Palestine. Uh, the governor kind of vaguely talks, yeah, you know, some residents have some symptoms, uh, but doesn't seem to be recognizing that it's kind of widespread in the community. Uh, we've come across folks, uh, diarrhea, vomiting, uh, sore throat, chemical burns, uh, dizziness, nausea, uh, headaches. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, but he kind of in interviews has said, well, I spoke with kids in school and they seem fine. And he said he wasn't, a re wasn't aware that rail workers are, uh, that are part of the cleanup are having symptoms. Uh, what, what have you heard uh, from colleagues uh, that are there uh, part, and part of the cleanup? When I, when I was there last Friday, um, I, I went to the town hall and um, it was uh, people weren't complaining. There were there were stories of people with um, these these troubles, but a lot of people were worried about the long term risks. That, that was the big concern that people worried about. What's this going to be in 20 years? You know, cancer cluster kind of stuff. That's what they were concerned about. The fact that they got the railroad put back together and running uh, in less than 10 minutes after the evacuation order was removed. That's some scary stuff. I, I believe it was, you know, less than 10 minutes that they they had trains running, you know, and then they said, oh, people can go home. Um, the guys that we had working there um, are reporting these issues, and the union is putting together um, – statements and a uh, you know we're, we're trying to get the point out there that they needed better protection and we need to make sure that we protect rail labor as well as the profit margin that's a you know it, it seems very frustrating we went from essential employees during the pandemic i had a piece of paper in my lunchbox to show an officer if i got pulled over um, during quarantine to expendable when it came to bargaining essential to us expendable in you know, with a look at the ticker tape, you know, ask the shareholders what they want. Well, we want more money. It's frustrating. And can I ask you also, uh, the governor and some others kind of made statements that alluded to the, the firefighters who originally went to put out the fire weren't aware of what the chemicals were on that train. Uh, they weren't told. Uh, I know you're not with the firefighters, but uh, were the, to your knowledge, were the workers that uh, from the rail unions that went down to help with the cleanup were they told uh what chemicals all the chemicals that were on that train and were they provided the proper respirators ppe etc i don't believe they they were they the the interview that you had uh shown um with johnny long and peter kennedy said they were in you know jeans and leather boots and leather gloves and um the crew gave the consist over to the authorities they only mentioned one or two of the chemicals. They didn't announce everything. And um, our guys went to work as well as the firefighters without knowing exactly what they're getting into. Since this happened, uh, A, was it a surprise to you? And B, can you kind of talk about um, your uh, knowledge that a lot of your uh, colleagues that have been part of the cleanup are now experiencing some symptoms? Yes, I I have, um, you know, Railroad Workers United has you know, said that things like this are going to happen. The effects of a corrupted business model, precision scheduled railroading, PSR, do more with less. And now it's more like do less with less. We're, they're not moving as much freight as they used to. And record profit margins. It's all about getting the, keeping the shareholders happy. And um, they've cut jobs up, up to 30% of the manpower since 2015. And we've, we've seen deferred maintenance. And um, unfortunately, this is what's going to happen. You know, it's very frustrating to see this stuff. We've got, you know, no other industry has a profit margin. You know, they're shooting for 55, 55 profits of 45 cents on the dollar that they gross. And, you know, fast food is looking for to get 85, 90, you know. So it's a, it's a shocking bit of news. And um, this has been predicted. And uh, lastly, not to get too heavy on you, but I I'm talking to residents whose homes smell like gas stations. I've heard formaldehyde, 
diesel. Uh, they can't be in their homes longer than half hour before they want to vomit, uh, dizzy, et cetera. But Norfolk Southern uh, is basically cutting them off for reimbursements past like four days at a hotel or what will only give them a thousand dollars. You know, we've heard all their uh, pontificating that we're going to spend whatever we need to spend and we're going to be there for the community. Uh, this is not your first rodeo with greedy rail companies. Uh, but, you know, just what's your response? We, we know about all the greed that led to this, uh, you know, the, the, the lobbying, cutting, uh, you know, cutting corners. But after the fact, it seems from from our conversations with the residents, uh, they're basically nickel and diming a lot of residents who it is not safe to go back to their homes, regardless of what, you know, the tests say. I, I think that, you know, perhaps we need the railroad to act in good faith and it shouldn't take a lawyer, a lawsuit to get them to do the right thing. It's it's pretty frustrating. Let's let's take care of these people. Let's um, let's make sure their their needs are taken care of, because this disruption in their lives, you know, you heard the NTSB was 100 percent preventable. And uh, one more, uh, not to make it too political, but I have to ask. It's not to say, you know, if the rail workers were allowed to go on strike, which by law should have been your right at the end of last year to go on strike. Uh, it's not to say it would have prevented this, but I, I interviewed rail workers who one of the big things that you wanted to go on strike about was understaffing, the thinning out of the workforce by 30 percent over the last decade. You know, two workers for 150 train cars, uh, outdated brake systems. Um, you know, we, we can't say it wouldn't have happened, but, uh, what are your thoughts now? Uh, obviously the president Biden and, and Congress blocked you from going on strike. Uh, do you think that would have made some type of difference? I think perhaps it would have had we been able to push my, my brothers and sisters in transportation, the engineers and conductors have terrible all on call times, extra boards, working conditions where they are on call. You know, are they are they're away from home hotel and they're getting their rest time away from their families? It's really a, a frustrating way of life. You know, it, it's about you know pay, benefits, job security, working conditions, and retirement, the whole package. And um, it was raises were fair, but the whole package wasn't uh, perfect. You know, a perfect hard thing to reach on, but it, it wasn't enough. And and more than half of real labor voted no on the 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 contract the tentative agreement that came out and then they imposed a contract on us and um even the shippers the shippers who were on our side with the s you know the stb hearings saying that they need to hire more people they need to serve the the customers and doing that with more employees and then the shippers just before we we're going to be able to go on strike called on congress to impose the agreement you know it, it's kind of frustrating. You know, I guess it shows the power we have though. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you for joining me and I'm hoping we're not going to need a John Stewart type uh, to get some attention. Sadly, if first responders and rail workers are having some serious health problems down the road, down the road, because God knows uh, what your rail workers who were there helping with the cleanup uh, inhaled uh, and hopefully uh, whatever their health symptoms now are, are short term and, and not long term. So it's uh, it's a pretty common kind of thing um, with uh, Federal Employees Liability Act. And, and I have with guys I've worked with, I've buried um, as many as nine guys, seven from non Hodgkin's lymphoma and two with esophageal cancer. And only two or three of those guys got to, to retirement. It's 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 you know, working conditions need to be addressed here. Thanks so much, Matt. Uh, rail Workers United, been a rail worker uh, since the 90s. Uh, we'll be in touch.